Hello, hello. Welcome back to Keeping It Real Estate with myself, Dylan Musgrave. And myself, Joanne Boulay. We are realtors at Remax Carling Realty here in Toronto, just in case it's the first time you're listening to us. Thanks so much. Um, we're really happy. This is our third episode. The last two episodes, we've gotten some good feedback, gotten some good plays on it. So we're really happy. This yeah. is this it's, We're excited. Out. It's yeah. my, I'm looking forward every week to recording this and spending some time with Dylan and just talking about real estate. So today, our word of the day is staging. And you might be wondering, when I sell my house, do I really have to stage it? Yes, it really translates better um, when you take photos and video and also when people come to look at your house. So the number one thing with staging isn't what you might expect, it's clean. There's three C's, but clean is the first one. And when I say clean, I don't mean just sweeping the floor and wiping your counters off, I mean like toothbrush clean. It's really important to get every little um, nook and cranny of your house clean. And they say that just by cleaning and having a toothbrush clean, that can bring you another $5,000. Yeah, like look at your baseboards, right? Yeah. Like the trimmer around your floor. Look at your windows, your window frames. If you like, uh, you know, up, up top of your kitchen counters, there's dust. Like those small things give your windows a clean, cleaner if you have electric baseboards, yeah. that kind of stuff, right? Like those things, because you may think, oh, well, so what, whatever. But when a buyer is coming in, and once again, even though it's a cleanliness thing, yeah. they're still going to look at it and may not push them off, but your value could be here when you're really could be Because I think the real big thing about it being really, really clean, uh, you know, beyond other things, but being really clean shows people that you're maintaining your home really well. And I think people will really respect that and they'll assign more money to a house if they feel like it's been looked after and that the current owner loves it. Oh, so home ownership pride is huge, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. People love seeing that when you can go in and like clean is big, but the first thing you walk in, it just smells fantastic. Well, that's part right? of clean, right? Yeah. Like, like if you walk into a house and it smells like dog or cat litter or musty smelling, you, you know, that really hurts your, your value. And, mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would say is don't turn on, I mean, everybody loves those sensey things, um, yep. but don't turn those on because then they think you're trying to cover something up. Exactly. And the biggest place for smell is the basement. You want to make sure that you get any musty smell out of the basement. And usually the culprit of that is wool carpet. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, the I mean, the second someone goes down in the basement and smells must, their first mindset's okay, do they have water coming in or where's the water? water? And it might not be water. It might be no. that you have old carpet that a cat or dog peed on and yep. you tried to clean it, but you just really can't get that smell out. That's right. Yeah. Throw a dehumidifier on. Yeah. Right? Have it run a little bit before you list your home and just really, really, really do a thorough walkthrough. Have someone who hasn't been in your home very often, just, just, just walk around, right? Yeah. Bring them through. And if, they're, yeah. they're going to have a better eye than you would well, catch you're up stuff. Well, right? living in your house and the other big thing I would say for cleaning is the fridge and the stove and any of your appliances because if the appliances are coming with the house, I always say to buyers, sellers that buyers are going to look at anything that they're purchasing. So they're not going to look through your, they shouldn't be looking through your dresser drawers, but they're probably going to look in your kitchen cabinets. Yeah. They're going to look in your closets. They're going to look in the fridge. And if you have leftovers from two weeks ago in there and it smells like death, then they're not going to love that. Right. No, so not at all, right? yeah. And Joanne's right. Like all, all the time I have clients opening cab, kitchen cabinets looking for lazy Susans. Lazy Susans. The thing. They get lazy so excited. Susans, don't right? they? Yeah. That. It's, so like, I, I, a good way I always explain is whatever you can do, obviously you're going to live in your home, but try to have it look unlived in, Yeah. right? Have it clean, have it presented where it looks like, oh, wow, this is stage. Where does the stage come from, right? What's the second C? Clutter. Clutter. Clear yeah. those surfaces. And it just it's not just as, as black or white as that. Go in your coat closets, anything shoes anything you're not going to need start packing it or right. getting rid of it right because you can stack boxes in the corner and they're not going to think anything of that because it exactly. looks like you're getting you want to move which is going to get the buyer excited because that means that they are going to get in they're, you know yeah they, yeah well and all the time like I, a couple months ago i talked with someone and they never thought about it but i was like just bring it new to you like they i think the they new brought, to you is amazing so yeah. for those of you that don't know it's part of the colchester community workshops yeah. on arthur street and i think they're open eight to four for drop off Monday to Friday and they have a shop there where they sell all this stuff and they'll take pretty much anything that's not 
you know, you don't want to take garbage to yep. them, but like anything that's good to be reused, they'll, they will take it and um, you just set a box up, throw everything in it and drop it off and they're happy that's to have right. it. Yeah. I like any, any extra, well, personally, any extra clothing or anything I don't have, I don't, I don't try to sell it or whatever. I just give it away, right? Give Absolutely. To someone else. And that's how I explain it too. It's like, you have all these, you have a linen closet with 47 different towels in there and you haven't touched them in four years. Let's clean some Go of them. get rid of them. Because right? you don't have to, you don't want to move this stuff, right? So that's, yeah. and then there's lots of other places. St. Vincent de Paul, if you have furniture and you don't want to move it, you can call them. Yep. And what they do, they're with um, one of the churches in town and they'll take people who need, like, so if they need a bed, They'll come to your house, pick the bed up, and they take it to the person and drop yeah. it off to them or a dresser. So, like, this this is a free service to get rid of the furniture you don't want. And at the same time, you're helping somebody else, exactly. out, which it's, is really nice. It's two birds, one stone. And right. then there's another um, space, Souls Harbor, on uh, King Street. And they take donations of things, too, as well, yeah. I think. And then the homeless shelter, usually good to check with them. But they'll take, a, usually they have a game for men's clothes. Yep. Sometimes they'll take women's stuff. Same with the Lotus Center. They'll take any unused. Sometimes you're cleaning out your cupboards um, and you might have cosmetics that you haven't used that haven't been opened. They take those and yep. hygiene exactly. products and all that sort of stuff. We actually right. have a full list. I think it's three pages of all the places you could do and everything from clothes to cars to hearing aids. Everything, like, right? Everything, yeah. So you may think you have this all this stuff you can't get rid of. I promise you. You can get rid of it. You just got to find the right place. Right? Absolutely. So, but that's like it's... Any kind of now personal belongings, like you're not going to be opening your dresser drawers, right? But your bedroom closets, yeah. you're going to be opening. So you're not going to get rid of clothes in there, but make sure your clothes are neat. And yeah. Don't just throw everything in there and when the door opens. Well, it's you want to make it right? look like, like there's lots of storage space too. Right. So you want to pack anything like so. We're coming into summer now, so like all your winter stuff. Hopefully we won't need any more winter. You just pack that and put it in a nice box. Exactly. Yeah. Some wardrobe boxes. I know. Um, Premier Van Lines, they have new boxes, but you can also get used boxes there for a pretty good price. Yeah. Stack them all up, neat in the corner, away you go. And then yeah. get rid of your other stuff. Um, same thing with the garage. So what happens when people are clearing their house for sale is everything ends up in the garage because they're trying to clear stage stuff out. Mm -hmm. Then you have this big pile of stuff in the garage. But I can tell you when showing a house, if you go into a garage that's neat and tidy, mm -hmm. totally different direction than if it's a big mess. And oh, even yeah. if the stuff is in the garage and you can't quite put it somewhere, stack it in boxes. Yeah. Right. Now, I, I know we live in Nova Scotia, and probably 9.9 out .9 of 10 people who have a garage never, ever put their car in it, but you, you still want your garage to look presentable, right? Yeah. I get it. It's more of a storage area, which is fine, which is fine to each yeah. your own, but when someone walks into your garage, you want to make sure that they can actually walk around, and it's not like a, a maze. Even with a predefined path, you want to make sure the more cluttered it looks, it, it's yeah. going to look smaller, right? So if there's less clutter in there, or if there is clutter and it's just nice and organized and put away, it's gonna help just just visually sell Abs it a lot, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, so you've got your garage. We talked about that. We talked about closets. Same thing with bathrooms. You have a lot of products in there that yeah. you're not using anymore. I know the drawers can get filled up with junk. Clean that out. Like anything that's more than usually you can look on your product to see how old, yeah. how long it lasts. Like so it'll say twelve six months. Usually twelve months, six months. Anything that's not good. To check it out anything that's not used that is still good and you don't want it uh lotus women's center right. is a great place for that um and then you want to even in the shower i know when i sold my house that my last house we had a little basket that we threw everything and stuck it underneath the sink because we want the people come in to envision that um you know that they don't that no one lives there they yeah. can picture themselves right. right i don't need people seeing what kind of shampoo i use yep. like yeah it's and and like People are going to be, like I said, opening your shower curtain to see the, okay, is it a bath fitter shower? Is it one piece? What's the caulking like? That kind of stuff. They're going to so, look in the bathroom drawers in the vanity. Right. Like they're going to pull those out to see what, the, what right. the storage is like. So at the same time, personal things won't be open, but you also want to make sure you have due diligence not to leave some stuff out too, right? You want to make yeah. sure that that's taken care of. So let's talk about the kitchen because yes. we talked about appliances. Those should be sparkling. You want to pull them out, clean everything. Because here's the other thing. When you go to move, you're going to have to make sure the house is clean up for the pre-closing walkthrough. Yeah. So let's get some of this stuff done now. Some of it's like spring cleaning, right? Mm -hmm. You're only going to have to do it once. So your cabinets, you're going to want to open those up and organize them again. Great time to clean out the pantry. You don't want when, you don't want food falling out. And if you don't have a lot of storage, I know I went to a house once and the kitchen didn't have a lot of cabinets. And in the living room, they were storing some of the food. So oh, right gosh. away, you're like... <laughs> um, there's not a lot of storage here and it's really easy to see, right? Yeah. Like, so, 
Um, the same thing with all your all your um, glasses, plates, all that stuff. It's a great time to clean all those sorts of things out. Yeah, and once again, you're gonna probably go through a purge stage. Yeah. You're like, listen, I have personally. I just got rid of like twenty coffee cups. Yes, coffee Co- mugs are so easy yeah. to. Um, well, for me, it was like it was kind of like a memorabilia thing, like. But, I, Growing up, but like I was like, listen, there's a point where I had a, a whole kitchen cabinet was the coffee cabinet. And you're not using them all. You're going to use no, you're one, using one or two, two right? mugs at, at a time, right? So it's it's time for you to go back and really see. It's going to help you in both ways. It's either going to help you get rid of it now that you would have yep. gotten rid of it in the future. And it's also going to help you realize, holy crap, I have so much stuff that I don't need. Um, well, I saw today, it was interesting, someone on Instagram they had were posted that they were reading. Uh, it was a book called "The Swedish Art, Quiet Gentle Art of Death Cleaning," and I was like, mm-hmm. "What is that? Like, what is death, death cleaning? cleaning?" But what they do is they purge their house, so when they pass away, their loved ones won't be left with a whole bunch of stuff that yeah. they have to deal with. And I thought that's a really good way to think of things, right? Like, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and life is so uncertain. Right? Life is like so uncertain. Yeah. Mm-hmm no idea so that, that that's smart really. yeah that's i thought i saw that life. and i thought that's a great way to think of it like is someone gonna want this when i'm gone probably not yeah what, yeah. A, what a morbid name though i know I, this was that's why it caught me and i'm like i have to google this to see what it is um so another thing to think about we'll try to go from death to happy yeah um happy selling your house so you you may have a kitchen table right yeah you probably do or an island or whatever Having it nice and clean is really nice. Well, that's what third C is clear. Clear, right? Clear. clear. So you want to make sure that you may have okay. You have think about it. We have air fryers. We have microwaves. We have pressure cookers. We have crock pots. Like how many? <laughs> how many? Blenders, how many, food right, processors, coffee, coffee makers, makers. Expo- but not just coffee. So machine, if you're like my it? house. We have a Keurig. We have an espresso machine. We have a oh um French press. Yep. Like I, I'm 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 kettles. somewhat of a I would call myself a barista. Not really. But I, but I have an espresso machine and you have your coffee grinder and, and all. So you really like having a couple things is okay. The standard things like, like a coffee machine is okay, right? Yeah. If you have that, that's fine. And if you have a microwave, that's fine too, right? But don't leave your air fryer in your instant pot. All this stuff. Pro- like let's, once again, neatly, let's find somewhere to put it, right? Yeah. Now, going back to what I was saying about tables and islands, same things go with coffee tables. Anything that, that it looks like it could have something find something whether it's a yeah. fake fake plants are huge right like yeah. buy a fake plant and just stick it right in the middle and I, it's it's just going to make it pop, pop all that absolutely more, right so there's a difference between having it cleared off and looking presentable and also being too barren almost yeah right? we don't want to be barren we want to you know cuz usually and you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money you can find like a nice little vase that maybe you have up in right. the cupboard that you could put some fresh flowers in. Or right. you know what's really great is a clear bowl and you put green apples in it. That always yeah. pops, it pops off, right? off really well. Another really cheap way to help with staging is light bulbs. Oh, you want to have lights. so much light. And you want to make sure if you have burnt out bulbs or flickering bulbs, let's replace those. Yeah. And I know this because my parents just came down and like half the lights were burned out in our house. My dad's like, we're going to get some LED bulbs. And he put them yeah. all in for me. Well, and I thought it was great. And, but and, and, uh, and if you don't know, Nova Scotia Power can come to an energy audit for you. Th- that's and, great. And if, efficiency through efficiency Nova Scotia. Right, exactly. And if they say, yep, you know, you can do this and this and this and this to make your house not just more efficient for your power bill, but they'll come and they will, I don't know if they give you the light bulbs or if so they, they, they do it for you. They do it for you. Yeah. So, so they come in and if you, you know, if you already have efficient bulbs, they're not going to do it. But if you have those old style bulbs, yeah. they'll get up on a ladder and change them for you. And that's right. why all of mine were half burnt out because we just didn't want to get up on a ladder and do it. But my dad did. So and let me tell you, I, I didn't qualify for that um, efficiency program, but I just went and bought light bulbs for my house a couple months ago. And I don't have a big house. I, I have a mini home. It was like it was a lot of money. It was like one hundred and twenty dollars yeah, so just for light bulbs. So it, they add up quickly. They do. And <laughs> here's something they don't tell you about those bulbs. They say they're going to last a long time. They don't. No. And when they start to flicker, that means they're going to burn out. Because yeah. I thought there was something wrong with all my lighting fixtures. I'm like, uh, I have an old house, right? Yeah. Is something wrong with that light fixture? No. It was starting to burn out. Well, and in addition to that, if you ever go into a room or usually if it's basements and you turn a light on and you hear that little like a yeah. humming sound, just replace that light bulb because someone's going to hear it. The whole point of you're trying to eliminate things people could 
have a question or have a problem with, right? Right. So, well, and light is so good, especially yeah. if you have a darker home, you want to get the light bulbs done, but also for the photos. Because if you right. have, and the other thing is you want to make sure, I'm kind of picky, but I like certain color temperatures. I don't like the yellow light. Yep. I like the blue bright uh, light. Yeah. So that we have all those bulbs in our house, but you don't want to have different colors in different rooms. No. Um, it's better for the photos. And it's also better when people are walking through. And then if we're talking about light, open up the curtains. There's a couple things I think with curtains. Get, get the windows open, the curtains open, so otherwise it looks like you're trying to hide a bad window. Yeah. And two, you were talking about cleaning windows. That's a good point, especially coming out of winter. A lot of people like to keep their blinds closed, and then the sun hits the window, and it's cold, and you get all this condensation running right. down, which gets mold on your ledge. And you can have lovely windows, and if you're not opening up those curtains every day to get rid of that condensation, it's going to be gone. it's gonna be gross. And it's I know it's hard to clean those windows, but a couple different tips, shot back. Get in there and use the shop. Yes, yeah, yeah. suck it up at the shop back. Um, but yeah, get those curtains open. Like yeah, yeah. blinds because they people don't want to. You don't want people playing with your blinds anyway. So pull them up and light exactly. your house up. So like super simple ways. We haven't even spent any money yet. No, except for maybe the light bulbs. Right. But um, efficiency Nova Scotia will do those for you. So but you got to think like all of this stuff. You, what you're spending is time, right? And another thing to do with time is let's look at paint. You don't have to go paint a whole room. But you probably have some extra paint cans downstairs from when you did paint however long ago that was. Touch up any nicks. Absolutely. Touch up any, any dings or whatever. Because once again, that isn't going to make someone walk away. But it's just going to... Show that you're that, caring for the home, right? Exactly. It's going to make the house look that much more better, right? Yeah. There's, when they come in, wow, like not a single scratch on the wall. There's nothing. It's just going to pop a lot. Yeah, I know. I just sold a house and it had brown walls. Like, I wouldn't paint walls brown in this day and age, but back yeah. when the walls were done and the paint was in the basement, I said, let's get those touched up. Yeah. Someone's probably going to come in and paint over top of that, but that's okay. It's just going to look, It has, it's just going to look more presentable, that's, right? Oh, exactly. Well, and we got to talk about photos and video. Like, people are zooming in. Everything is such high resolution now. Yeah. Any little thing could deter someone from coming to look at your home. What's, I think the most key part about staging a house, look, having it look good for showings is really important, but staging is really for the photos. Yeah. Because if you, if your photos don't look good for, to at least get that buyer in yeah. the door, you're going to lose them anyway. Right? Absolutely. So your house could look phenomenal in person, but then the photos look lackluster. They're gone. They're not, because why would they? They don't yeah. know it looks phenomenal. They don't know you cleaned it up or whatever. So staging, it's both on both. It, it's really important on both ends, but you're yeah. really doing it to sell those photos, right? So they look through the pictures. Wow, that room looks really bright. Wow, I love that kitchen. Look yeah. at all the countertop space, right? That's the, like you're driving home that buyer to get their foot in the door, which then hopefully will result to an offer in hand. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And then the other thing we haven't talked about is photos. Yeah. Personal photos. So the main reason why you want to take personal photos, there's a couple reasons. First one is you want people you want people to be able to envision themselves living in your right. home. So if you right. have pictures of babies and all that kinds of things all over your walls, that's gonna inhibit that. But the other big thing is buyers get distracted easy. They wanna go I wonder if I know them and they're looking at the photo yeah. and that's kind of taking away from the house. So let's take all the personal photos down, pack them away very safely, nicely in a box yeah. and rearrange some stuff. Now you got to watch it. Sometimes we start taking photos down and then there's nails and stuff that are or in the been, wall. Or they've been, they've been there for 40 Four years. years and there's that outline. <laughs> yes. So, you know, move things around or maybe you're doing a little painting then, right? Yeah. But, um, and speaking of that, if you're making holes in the walls by removing stuff, you're going to want to patch those up and paint those too, mm -hmm. right? And, and that, you know, if you have the paint in the basement, that's great. If you don't have the paint anymore and you want to color match, you can actually take a little sample of the paint down to like Chase's or Carter's and sometimes they can match that up for you and yeah. just sell you a little can. You don't need a whole bunch of it, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's really important, all these small things. And like we said, like, sure, are there something here that may cost you a couple yeah. dollars? That's fine. But the biggest thing that's going to cost you is time. And when you're trying to sell your house and you want to get top dollar for it, yeah. I think if all something that's costing you is time, you should do everything you possibly can, right? Like a big one's pressure washing your house. So many houses yeah, I see. Yeah, we haven't even touched outside yet. Yeah, and we're like, in the spring now, so let's talk exactly. about that. Yeah. So like you go outside and I see moss all over the siding. Or the gutters house. are black. Right. And there's nothing wrong. There, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. That, it like, just doesn't look pretty. No. And once again, that's going to reflect in the photos, right? Yeah. So go down, go rent if you don't have one, a pressure washer for a day and just take a couple hours and just 
go over your windows, go over your siding, go over your deck, go over your gutters, all that stuff. And it's just, it's the curb appeal is just going to pop. Concrete walkways too, clean up really nice with that. Uh, Yeah, so you want to make sure your grass is mowed and trimmed and weed whacked. Um, fresh mulch in the flower beds is really great. Yeah. I know today that was uh, really exciting. I was able to get out in the yard. My mom was here, so we went out and like pulled all the weeds out, and I'm all ready to put the mulch in for this year. Um, even some flower baskets are nice once it gets yeah. a little warmer, like you know, hanging or on your deck. That's going to cost a little money, but you know, if you do want to invest some money, flowers are great. Nice wreath for the door, exactly. trimming branches, all that sort of stuff. Um, mailbox. If you have an old rusty mailbox, let's get it out of there and yeah. get a new get one a new in one. if we That's can. Right. Like if you want to invest money, same with new house numbers. Um, and then we should talk a little bit about like if you do want to spend a little money, what things should you focus on? So I'd say paint's probably the first one. And we're not saying you have to paint everything, but if you have a room that's bright purple or pink or green. It's going to benefit you a lot. If you can paint it a yeah. neutral color. Um, and we're not talking gray anymore. No. Gray's out. People, not, not do you the hear color this? Of gray, grays out. That dark gray. Now, I, I think a safe color would be like more like a beigey gray. Yeah. And people may disagree with me. I don't know, but it's so neutral. Like it goes well with everything. Yeah. Right. Like I think so. But paint. although I've seen, okay, white cabinets were the thing for a while. Right. I've seen black cabinets and dark green cabinets, and I'm like, the, I mean, if, if you can get away with dark blue cabinets, you can get away with dark. I, I don't like dark blue. I would do dark green before dark blue. I don't think I'd do either. My my kitchen's white. My whole house is white, as you know. Yeah. But um, I'm always a little behind the time, so it's okay. Um, I know white walls it's, were a thing, but now they're coming in dark. But it's it's it's, it's the golden handles is what gets me. Yeah. I don't think those, especially when you have like a dark blue or a dark green. In my opinion, have a nice stainless steel. Stainless steel is good, yeah, because we're black. we're seeing gold uh, fixtures now, not brass, gold, gold. Yeah. and they do look kind of neat. I kind of like them actually. I wouldn't put them in my own house because I don't think they're very timely. But um, yeah, it's it's all the enrage. Yeah. And it was before it was minimalist, right? Like white walls with like sort of rattan or like white couches. Everything was kind of like very light and bright. Now I'm seeing dark green and like vintage, like granny yeah. sort of like maximalism on tiktok i don't know what you i don't know exactly what it's come up in your tiktok but on mine it's all about all the different yeah, styles right. and like that's great if you like that that's fine but that's not me i'm definitely white walls minimalist i'm not a stuff well, person and like think about like how often i've seen new wallpaper in how, like wallpaper that was put up this year yeah so wallpaper's coming floral, back. Floral is coming back wainscoting i love wainscoting but wainscoting is coming back i like wainscoting if it's done nicely right like so, it's it's interesting because a lot of the stuff was coming full circle, right? Like yeah. Wall, wallpaper was in, it was banished, and now we're coming back to oh, okay, cool. And black, like matte black is also the thing yeah. for handles, fixtures, uh, plumbing fixtures. Yeah. I'm I'm still chrome or silver or, yeah. or brushed nickel or whatever you want to call it, but black is definitely it, and it's lovely. Um, but it's kind of stark for me, for my taste. Yeah. But but if you're looking to do an update really quick, you could update your sink. You could update your tops. You could update your lighting yeah. fixtures. And if you do the black, people right now are going to love it. So let's... Don't paint a room black. Though I don't know if you remember, there was a house last year on the market that had a whole black... There were two bedrooms. They were all black. I don't think I showed those, or they maybe I blocked them out of my mind. But <laughs> um, um, Now, just a fun fact. Yeah. Your kitchen... And your bathroom, more your kitchen, number one, but your bathroom, those are the two spots. Green Match made a blog about this a couple months ago. Yeah. We're going to see the most return on your investment. You Absolutely. Do. So stuff like your handles to your cabinets yep. or just completely doing new countertops or new count cabinets. You're going to see more of, of a return on your money that you put into that than like, let's say you do, you replace floor in your living room or you put uh, a sunlight in. Right, yeah. Light fixtures are really big too. Light fi- light fixtures aren't expensive. No. Like big picture, you can go get a really nice light fixture for two hundred dollars. Put it in your living or sorry, um, kitchen or dining room. Yeah. And it'll pop. And if you have boob lights, it's worth replacing them. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> so, not that you have to, but it, it's an option, right? Um, and w- let's talk about flooring. So I would say if you have carpet, some people like carpet, some people hate it. Just make sure it's clean. Yeah. And not stained. Yeah. Um, hardwood floors, same thing. You're going to want to make sure that um, they're nice and clean. And if there's yeah. scratches, if you can have them redone, that's 
great if you can, and that's all right. And flooring, I wouldn't say replace any flooring that's vinyl or click unless it's damaged. If it's damaged, yeah. I always recommend replacing it because you can get lots of great options that are fairly cheap yeah. and a quick fix. Exactly. Um, and I think that really shows that um, you know that you're you're taking care of the house. But that that returns probably only if the I only replace flooring if it's damaged. Like I've got um, older laminate upstairs in my house. Not great laminate, but it's the older style, but it's all in good shape. I'm not going to replace that until I kind of have to, right? Right, exactly. It's just money you don't have to spend, right? And it's not going to get you that much back on your on whatever money you put into yeah, it. Yeah, but if the floor is ripped and there's a hole in the middle of the floor, then yeah, let's replace yeah. that if you can get away with that, right? Same with appliances. Yeah. If they work, don't replace them. Like, don't, I mean, unless you're in a super high end house, as long as they work, people aren't going to care. They just want a fridge and stove. That's right. Yeah. And if you're in a super high end house, what's a $2,000? Fridge and two thousand dollars is a nice fridge, right? So, yeah. so what's a seven hundred dollars fridge? Right? Yeah, like exactly. Um, going back to outside, so let's think about okay, outside. We talk about garages, sheds, same idea as garages, right? Paint, paint the shed. Yeah, make have it night. Nice curb appeal, but inside, don't let when you open the shed doors open, everything fall out, right? Like make yeah. sure that it's nice, it's organized. People can walk in. They have some. You know, flex room so you can see it. That's all. But sheds, same idea as garages. Make sure that it's. it's and look it's behind the shed and make sure. I don't know why I'm going down. Look behind the shed and make sure that there's not a whole bunch of junk piled up around it, right? Because right. I always look behind. Like if we're if I'm showing a house, I'm like, okay, let's go back here. And usually there's no siding on the back of it, or there's a bunch of garbage or whatever. Get that out of there. Yeah. Yeah. It's that small stuff, and like I said, it costs doesn't cost you anything. No. Right. Just get it out. Because it's going to, if you're not doing it now, you're going to have to do it later. Yeah. And right? you can try so to get away with it at pre-closing inspection, but nine times out of ten, the buyer's going to complain about it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's not okay. Not no. okay. So, uh, roofs. Let's talk about roof shingles. Yeah. If your roof needs to be done and they're all curling, if you can afford to do it, that's going to come back to you. Yeah. And don't do metal. If you're sell, if you're doing the roof to sell, you don't need to do metal. Metal's too expensive. Buyers, if, as long as there's a new roof, the buyer's not going to care if it's metal versus asphalt shingle. At least that's right, yeah. I don't think so because it's, it's a lot more money, and I think that you can get away with asphalt shingle on your roof. Well, and more most buyers aren't looking 20 years in the future, right? No. Like, if it's, they're going to see those words, new roof. And they're going to be happy. Just like that. So I have no idea. I know prices have skyrocketed, but your average house roof may cost what? Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Yes. So, I, so I you may not. But if you have the money to do it, because it's going to be an issue for you, and I think it'll come back. The other thing I always look at is oil tanks if they're at yeah. a date. Um, it's kind of two months. That sometimes the buyer will be okay with it because we're going to take the oil out anyways. Yeah. But a lot of times that will come back to you. And same with um, hot water tanks. I don't generally advise to replace Just those. Yeah. Just leave them because if it's working, it doesn't necessarily need that. I mean, it needs to be replaced because the inspector always says. General life expectancy is 9 to 12 yeah, years, and if exactly. it's 10 years old, the buyer's going to come at you and say, oh, we need a new hot water tank. Well, if it's not rusty, you do a plumbing inspection, it all looks good, then the seller's yeah. not going to replace that probably, right? Like, And, I mean, absolute worst case scenario, what's a hot water tank? Not very much. And you can mm-hmm. rent them. Right. If it's oil, you can rent them for like 25 bucks a month, and then you don't have to worry yeah. about it. They just come and take care of it. They maintain them too, yeah. Yeah, it's great. They flush them and do all that sort of stuff. If you have any issues, you just call them up and away you go. Yeah. So... Other than outside, what else is there? Decks. We talked about decks. If your deck, like if it needs some paint, paint it. Yeah. Right. Like it could be in great shape or sorry condition, but if the paint's starting to chip, it's it's gonna yeah. look a little rough. So take some time. And if you don't have the paint to match it, white is usually a good solid color. Yeah, right? uh, white is good. Yeah. You know, it's it's good. It's neutral. So. Same with fences, like if it's leaning a little bit, if you can get someone to come and straighten it up for you or replace a couple, that's the other thing with the deck. If there's a couple rotten boards, if you can get them replaced ahead of time, Mm -hmm. that's going to come back to you. So replace the rotten boards and then give it a good coat of paint. We're to a time of year now where you can do that, right? Exactly. So obviously there's a list of this is way more important than this. And that comes down to every situation is different, right? So... Doing these things. Is this is more kind of getting your home ready for sale. We exactly. haven't even really touched on when you get into doing the photos and actually yeah. staging it, but I think it all kind of comes together, right? It does. And the big thing is, is you're doing these things to get more money for your home. And it's not just getting more money for your house. You're really doing it to get more people through the door. Making which, it more saleable. Exactly. Which in turn will get more money for your house. Because yeah. the second you have an offer in hand, everything after that's competing, right? Yeah. So... The second you can get more people through the door, 
by doing things that are either free or cheap and all the cost is time, just do it. Yeah. You'll, you'll benefit way, way more for it. Absolutely. I, I, I absolutely agree. And, yeah. and I know everybody's limited by maybe health or time or, or money, money. Exactly. but there's what, what I guess the biggest message is that we can come on our first visit when we come to look at your house and walk through and make you a list, right? Of yeah. things that you absolutely have to do. Things that are suggested, and if you had, this would be nice, right? Yeah. And and you know we'll make a case by case basis and personalize that list for you depending on your circumstances. One thing I do want to say, and this just hit my mind, if you smoke in your home, stop. Okay, so if if you think if you know you're going to be selling your house, just stop smoking in your house, right? Um, no judgment, it is what it is. But just, everyone does everything. But, but it's going to cost you money, right? The second you know that like, like you made the decision, I want to I want to sell my house. Stop smoking in your home. And the garage. And any, yeah, anywhere inside. Just smoke outside. Yeah. Second thing, okay, what's the easiest way to cover up smoke smell? Cigarette smoke smell? Paint. Cool. You gotta clean it first with TSP, though. Right, right. But after it's clean, yeah. painting, just paint your walls. And you'd be really surprised the wonder that it does. It's really gonna, because I've experienced it. It can be a stunning house. The photos are beautiful. And you walk in, and it's just like a wall. I've had buyers actually turn around and they wouldn't even look at the house. They just turn around yeah. and go right back out, I, which is sad because it's probably a lovely house, probably mm-hmm. lovely people. They probably don't even know. They don't even smell it because you li- when you live in something, you don't. Exactly. And yeah. you, you can get rid of cigarette smoke. It's not like once the house is smoked in, it's, it's you'll too, never get rid of it. No, right? you can right. get rid of it, but they just, they can't do it. And, and there's a lot of, um, a lot of buyers that just won't yeah. even consider it. So yeah, I think stopping and finding another place to do that, right? Whether it's outside or your car or wherever you want to go. And um, that's going to come back to you because I think it costs you about 10 grand. Yeah. I, I, well, I, there, there was a house last year. It was it was, it was was not a big split entry, but it was like seven grand. And yeah. And it's it's one of those things where you got to think, if I'm going to spend $7,000 now, I can almost guarantee you, you would see a return on that investment from the amount of money you'd sell from your house. Yeah. Okay, wait a second. What was the seven thousand dollars for? To have it painted and cleaned and yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Now exactly. I, I hear what you're saying. So, and maybe it was a little more because it was a different scenario, but it's, it was it was smoked in for like twenty years. Yeah. So it was pretty much a go in, got not got take walls down, but clean everything. And TSP is kind of nasty to use. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not a. I think that's why buyers really balk at it because. It's a, it's a harsh chemical, and I know there's probably some environmentally friendly ones that are yeah. there too, but if you're going to use TSP, it's not a real fun job. Really, It's not really fun to right. deal with, right? Because you're going to, yeah. Well, if you have kids, you don't want to bring your kids into a house that smells like that either, even though it's fixable. It's, it's just something that all around, it, it can be a deterrent for people. Yep. So. Let's talk about pets. Yeah. Dogs. Well, we dogs. Cats. Well, cats. Both. Litter boxes. Let's talk yeah. about litter boxes and fur. So you need to clean that litter box. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get the cat out of the house, like get the litter box clean. And by clean, I don't just mean scooping it every now and then. Like you need to wash the litter box out too, right? Yeah. Like clean with bleach or something on a weekly basis and then make sure it's always scooped. And exactly. If you can get the cat out, I don't know how you get the cat out, but if you can get it out for the showing, that's ideal. Not, not that everybody can do that. Yeah. And the fur, you need to clean up the fur. Oh, and I have Both three cats, and I the fur is almost impossible. But you got you got to manage it. You you need to because if someone goes in and there's cat hair everywhere, and on the curtains there's cat hair. It's just it's just the cats are following you not, around. Yeah. Although I kind of like it when the cats follow me around. Cause yeah, I, it's, I I was at a house recently, two two lovely kitties, and you know I love cats. But well, let's talk about dogs. So the biggest thing that dog I poop dog. Poop. We have clean up scent, the poop. Yeah, scent. Right? Do you need to clean the poop up out of the yard? Yeah. And the scent, which means how do you do that? You wash their bedding anywhere that they're going to be. If yep. you wash that on a regular basis with hot water and soap, that should help some. Yeah. Um, and cleaning up the fur again and the mud and all the stuff that comes along with uh, exactly. slobbery dogs. Because I've got three, I can say they're slobbery because they are. It's it, and and once again, like it's it's difficult because when when you. you living at home and you have a family and you have a dog you don't you may not know that there's a smell per se right so bring somebody from the outside in to be honest right. with you or ask your agent like they'll, they'll be if someone said does my house smell like dog i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna no. say yes of course it does and here's some ways to do that right exactly and they shouldn't lie to you right they want to tell you what you can our job is to make not to 
be in your corner, but we want to get you the top dollar for your house, right? So we're going to tell you these are the issues that are present. How can we work with these to make sure you can get the top dollar for your house? Absolutely. Right? No, that, that's a really good. Yeah, no, pets can be a real little problem. But um, And if you have a dog and you're going to allow showings while the dog is there and the dog likes to run out the door, you need to tell that agent so they know so the dog doesn't <laughs> run away and they're not running all over the neighborhood looking for it in up and down railway tracks and through backyards. Yeah, that happened to me once. Dylan the, was with me, the, actually. The, that was a few years the, ago. This, this was years ago. and, and, and It was yeah, funny. I we was... caught him. But um, apparently George is known to do this, this dog. And, um, yeah. It's funny you still remember his name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, was... Anyways, we caught him. It was no problem. <laughs> but is this find the dog's home? Yeah, it's find the dog's home. But if he's a runner, tell me. Yeah. Right? Exactly. But it's better not to have the dog at home. It's better to send the dog uh, to, to daycare or to Grammys or wherever it can go. And like, keep in mind, like we understand everyone's like when you're selling your house, your circumstance with work, whatever it could be, is this. And we're just talking ideal you, situations, you, you, you right? Have, you have no choice but to leave your dog home, right? You have no choice. Or there's a last minute showing, and we really, really want to get them in, but the cat litter hasn't been scooped. Whatever, we can work with it. We'll let. Hey, just just by the way, we'll let the eight. Buyer, the, the other agent know, hey, by the way, the litter has been scooped today. It might be a little scent. Just please don't mind it. Just prepare your clients, right? It, it, exactly. It's, it's all about... Yeah, no, we're talking... We're just talking like in the ideal world, this is what would happen. We understand that people have lives and life happens and exactly. everything's not perfect, but... Exactly. Yeah, so that's good. I think that's, that's a lot of staging stuff. And, and we yeah. do a staging for photos too. Like, so... Great thing to have when your photographer is coming or your agent. I'm a professional photographer, so I do all my own photos. But a lot of agents, hi- like you hire, you've hired photographers before, um, to have a laundry basket. And then when you're going through the house, if there's things that you're using on the daily that um, you need to have out but aren't going to be great for photos, we can throw everything in the laundry basket, take it into the other room, yep. like take photos. So things that I would remove for photos are blankets on the back of couches. They don't translate well. Um, paper towel, anything that's really bright or like... Bright orange, bright red. I'm thinking the laundry yep. room, like tied things. Um, I think it's going to be distracting. Um, the biggest thing I hate is on the, I don't know why, but on the front of the stove, you know, the dish towels. Yep. Let's get rid of those. Take I, them down. Take them down. No dirty, no dirty um, dishes in the sink, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, and again, clearing your surfaces because some of that stuff you may need on a daily basis. So we can just hide it in the cupboards underneath for the photos and bring it back up. Yeah. In the bathroom, please close the toilet lid on the toilet. And, and if if someone's peed in the toilet, you want to flush it. Here, here's a challenge for you. Go look at just any MLS listing, and you'd be surprised how many have toilet lids open in the front. I don't know why it's a thing, but it's just it's just a thing, right? So uh, garbage cans I'd like to get rid of. Any pet stuff, we want to get those out for the photos. Yeah. None of that stuff really translates very well. Anything personal, if you have like a degree and your name's on it and all that stuff, I'd recommend taking that down, not just for the photos, but probably yeah. for that. Um you know, all that sort of stuff. And again, when you're taking the photos, you're going to turn on every light in the house. For I don't sure. care if it's in the middle of the day and it's bright and sunny. Every light, more light, the more light you can have. Open every single window. window. Make sure the curtains and or blinds are the same distance yeah, away, from away from each, each other, other, right? No cars in your outside photos. Yeah, no yeah. Vehicles, we usually right? prep the seller and say, hey, we're coming and we're going to ask you to move your car to the street. We can do that before or after. But you also want to watch when you're doing angles with the windows that you don't see anything outside. That's right, exactly. Yeah, and same thing with, um, you know, shoes and coats and all the stuff that you use on a regular basis. Yeah. It's probably okay for it to be there for the showing, but for the photos, we're probably going to ask you to clear clear yeah. that stuff out. So, you know, sometimes we're doing the photos before you've really had a chance to kind of pack all that stuff up. Right. So. Um, those are just a few little tips that I can think of. Um, the other thing we should talk about is security. So, like, when you're having showings, you don't want to leave cash laying around. I've seen piles of cash at showings before. Like, that's not good. Jewelry, any jewelry that you have, like, we try to make sure that everything is good and, and that the buyers are safe and all that stuff coming through your home. But why leave a temptation out? Like, yeah. iPads, cell phones, anything that's really breakable and really valuable, I say to pack that up and put it away, right? And just leading into that, we've never like I've never heard of an issue. No, recently. I've never it, he- either. It's but... more just to, just a kind of disclaimer in the fact that nine point nine point nine out of it's any safe. buyer walking through your house, they're trusted. Yeah. They're, they're, well, and I never happen. leave. I never let a buyer no. wander through a room by themselves. Anyways, no. I'm always with them. They don't get ahead of me. Um, but 
on the off chance that something was to happen, I think you're better off just to put anything exactly. valuable yeah. away, right? Same with just a little off topic here, but let's say you have a chandelier, a light fixture you love, right? Or you have, I've seen where there's been stained, it was a stained glass window and they, they love that stained glass window. That's not staying with the sale. Any fixture, now fixtures are things that stay with the property, right? Any fixture that you say, you know what? I am taking it with me. Yeah. Don't have it apparent in the pictures. Don't have it apparent in the showings. Get rid of it before then. Yo, like I had someone I want to keep kitchen island once. Yeah. It goes out of the house before buyers and sees it. Because the minute you tell them they can't have it. They want it. They want they it. They want it. They're going to, and they will die. Do you know what the weirdest <laughs> one I ever heard of was? Someone wanted to keep the toilet. Why? Were they going to replace it? No. They just wanted to take the toilet. <laughs> it wasn't my listing. I just remember seeing it on the listing. <laughs> it was like. The toilet is excluded. I'm like, that's really weird. What one? Was there just one toilet? I don't know. But I thought to myself, <laughs> we should just be taking that toilet out if you want to keep it. I don't yeah. know if it was a special toilet, whatever. And you should put a new toilet in. Man. And like, and like, there's oddities like that all the time that like. Yeah, you, keep, you know, who knows? <laughs> it could have been a, who knows? What? You don't know. It, that's the thing. There's no judgment. It's just looking at it from face value. You're like, I wonder how special that toilet is. It's very special. It has sentimental value. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so any any fixture that you do not want. Because if it because appliances. This is what I've heard before. If you take the house and shake it, yeah, turn it upside down, down yeah. and it could fall off the wall or fall out, then it's considered a chattel. Right. And if it's screwed to the wall and is affixed, then it's a fixture. fixture. So if there's special shelving that is screwed to the wall that you want to take, you better take that down and patch the holes. Yep. Let's talk about TV, TV mounts. mounts. I'm just going to say. So TV mounts, they're kind of like, sometimes people feel like that's subjective, but it's really not. If the TV mount is affixed to the wall, um, it should stay. But I always clarify that in my offers. I think you probably oh, do yes. too. Yep. And I always have the conversation with the buyer that if you want that TV mount removed, it's probably going to leave a hole in the wall. So either you're going to be okay with that or we're going to ask the seller to repair that and paint it. Yeah. So there's no mix-ups on closing. You know what's going to happen because... That can be very subjective, right? Those are the little things after they've gone through the inspections exactly. and stuff that they get kind of a little bit, you know, it, it, you just want to make sure the communication's there, I think. Well, TV mounts leave huge honking holes. They leave huge holes, yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's not, and like, it's ripping paint off, and like, it's pure drywall behind where the TV mount was, so. It's a hard repair. Oh, yeah. So, you want to make sure, once again, set expectations. So, if you know they're going to stay, then tell your agent. These are staying with the sale. If you want to take them, make sure that if it's not brought up, you say, by the way, we want to take the TV mounts. They're excluded. And, and how you're going to deal with it. Because you right. can either say, I'm not fixing the walls or I am fixing the walls. But either way, that should be communicated to the buyer. Right? Yeah, fix the walls. Fix the walls. It's, it's, it'll take you 10 minutes. Just just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's those things like sheds. I heard of a scenario once where a shed was taken. Right? Yes. At closing. Yeah, at closing. And it's like, you might be thinking, who's going to take a shed? Obviously, that one person Dude. loved that shed, shed right? And, took it. and they're like, I'm going to pull the wool over this person's eyes. And, and I'm certain they weren't, they weren't, you know, purposely thinking negatively. But a shed was taken. So in an offer, yeah. I, okay, I sh I, the shed is to stay. The bathroom mirrors are to stay. The heat pump. And, and remote, door remotes and, the, and the remote staying, staying. And right? I usually say the like, heat pump and the remote. I don't know why. I don't know if someone would take one off the wall, but I just feel like the one time you don't, it's gonna happen. Central vac. I yep. heard once about and a mailbox. One, someone stole the, the yes. seller yep. took the mailbox. So usually, if it's a spe something special, if it's custom, like if you notice it's all custom and painted, it might be good to ask about it. Yeah. Um, let me think here. What else? Green compost bin. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Green bin. Yeah. Um, sheds, wood stove, and accessories, I always say. Yep. Um, electric fireplace insert, because those actually would be, a, like mine comes pull out, out, pull yep. out. Um, but just little things that could, our job is to kind of foresee any issues that could come up. And as experienced agents, we know what to put in the offer to make That's sure right. that it's not going to be an issue down the road for you. So let's talk about curtains and window coverings. Blinds are screwed in, they mm -hmm. stay. Hardware on the walls, it stays. Curtains would be considered a chattel. Yeah. So if you want the curtains, you need to ask. And the rod too, right? The rod's a chattel because it comes it comes off. The two hooks, yeah. they're fixtures, so they're gonna stay. So you want to ask for those if exactly. you want them, yeah. So it's and and like like Joanne said, like what this does is it's 
the the agreement of purchase and sale for you to sell your house it's a contract yeah right so these things are in this contract that have to be obliged by both parties yeah so if the seller if yourself or the seller if you're on the buying side decides yeah i'm you know what i am going to take my bathroom mirrors they were never in the offer we want to make sure that okay no 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 no. it says right here the bathroom mirrors are in the offer so there's no discrepancies no. right they have closings a happy you know you get the keys or you get your money either way it's a really happy yep. day right we don't want a sour free close walk through we want everybody to win right, exactly. everybody to win and that's what i say you don't want to create an adversarial relationship if you don't need, no. to, need to or you don't want to create one at all actually I shouldn't say that um and i think that taking that approach if you know I'm going to do this for my seller, my buyer, and we're going to bulldoze you. That's not the attitude no. you want. You want to be everybody to work together. And nine right. times out of ten, that's the way it goes. But um, foreseeing some of these things that could come up, I think that water softener is another one that's always oh, good to I, I've heard of one recently. And central back and equipment. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could go on and on. There's all kinds of things. The, the biggest thing, like, like, like we said, is it's... This is to, to protect you, yeah. right? Uh, even on the selling side, it's to protect you too. Right? Well, to clarify, because you don't exactly. want surprises. Like maybe there's something that the buyer wanted that they didn't specify and they just assumed. And you shouldn't assume because it's written into the listing that it's going to stay. I've heard, not personally, but I've heard, you know, how the Nova Scotia Real Estate Commission sends out those discipline letters. So, so the listing said a hot tub was included. Mm -hmm. The cut sheet said the hot tub was included, but they didn't write it into the offer. So the sellers right. took the hot tub. And remember, the only thing that is absolutely legally binding is the offer. Doesn't matter what the listing says. Doesn't matter what realtor.ca says. If it's not in the offer. For inclusions. The yeah. seller is not obliged to leave it. Especially if it's a hot tub, that's technically a chattel. Now, is it hooked up? Are there other things that are fixtures? 100%. But you really want to make sure that listing cut says this, 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 offer. This, 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 this. Yeah, like so right. a barbecue or yeah, hot exactly. tub or whatever. It should be written into the offer and, and yeah. it should always be clarified. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you go to your lawyer in closing and say, hey, well, the listing cut said there's a barbecue included and our and he's going to pull your offer up and say, well, it's not here. You, you have no, no feet to stand on, right? Yeah. That's, you're done there. So re really want to make sure that you're covering your own butt, right? Yeah. So I always, you know, I look, one, I know one practice that I do when I write an offer, I look at the listing, listing information and whatever's included, I'll include those, but then I go through the photos yeah. and I look for TV mounts. And even if I'm in the house, sometimes I'll do that too. I'll look for things that I think that could be an issue in the future and ask the buyer, do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want this? And then, okay, let's put it in the offer. And if they don't yeah. want it, then, or, or here's the other thing. I showed a house a little while ago and it had a hot tub. It was not a good hot tub. It was a hot tub that she probably go to wherever hot tubs go when they're done. And, um, you know, in that case, the listing says it's there. Uh, but what I would ask in my offer is for it to be removed from the property. Right. Right? Because they could say, well, we included it, so of course it's staying. So you just don't want any confusion. You just want no. clarity for everybody. But, you know, just because something's included doesn't necessarily mean that the buyer wants it. So if they don't want exactly. it, that's the other thing is you should ask them to remove it in a workmanlike manner. And sellers could do that on purpose, right? Trying to leave their problems to someone else. Yeah. Right? Well, and I'm, I know I had a closing and there was things like a big old green freezer and there was an old chair and there was this and there was that. And, you know, I kind of foresaw some of the issues that could be issues on closing yeah. day. And I was able to go to the agent and say, okay, well, make sure they remove the piano. Make sure they remove the freezer. Make sure they remove this. And we were able to get most of it out to avoid problems on closing right right ahead of time so like that's part of our job too is when you're doing your building inspection it's a great time to walk around and say okay there's a whole bunch of junk behind this shed they might try to leave that there so let's talk to their agent and make sure make a point to say can you make sure that's please removed right and that usually yeah. alleviates some issues too exactly exactly yeah the whole point of this is we want to make sure that on the day of closing everything is as it should be and there's no confusion and there's no headache and I know we've kind of strayed from staging a bit, but the biggest thing, because sure you have the house and everything, but you want to make sure whatever you're asking for inclusions in the offer, it's there, right? Yeah. All the appliances are there, anything extra. And that they're working, right? That's the other thing. Order, exactly. If you, and it doesn't matter. You could have your inspection and it's working. And then the morning of pre-close, it's not working. Well, no. Right in the offer, it states in working order. Yeah. Right. So you want to test them on closing day exactly. too, right? And exactly. walk around. I mean, but that that could be a whole other podcast. So yeah.
and it will be. So let's move on from that a little bit. We want to talk about some stuff happening in Truro this week. Yeah. So Truro Buzz has Taco Week coming up. So that's April the 30th. So that'll be, what day is April the 30th? That's next week. Probably Monday, right? Monday to May the 6th. And um, so there's tacos at different restaurants, but they also have a whole slew of events. You're going to have to... um, Forgive us here because we're going to look at the computer because there's a whole bunch of them. I can't remember yeah. them all. So, first event up, karaoke kickoff. Are you going to sing karaoke, Dylan? No. No? So it depends how much liquid confidence I have. In yeah, me. yeah. I'm uh, I'm not a great singer. I like to sing. I would probably do karaoke, <laughs> but I don't know if anybody else would like it. So, anyways, karaoke kickoff is on April the 30th from 9, to 2 a- 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. And it's at Julia's Lounge. And um, there's going to be a contest, and they have a taco as well. So they ha- oh, no, sorry, it's not a taco. It's a taco Caesar. So yeah. it's a drink. I'm not a fan of Caesars. I don't like no, tomatoes. Neither. neither of us would be drinking that. But it's if you like a Caesar, it might be good. It has um, Taco Bell hot sauce and taco seasoning, and it's garnished with a pickled bean, olive, jalapeno, and lime, and guacamole. What? Guacamole chip. Guacamole chip, okay. Hmm, interesting. Seven seventy five with a 15% of every drink donated to the um, CMHA, which is the Mental Health Association, yes. Colchester. Okay, yeah. hey, so that's that one. You can talk about this one. So pinatas. Everyone loves swinging the stuff, hitting it, right? So uh, 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 let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, you're throwing this on me. Okay, so pinata contest. This is uh, to do with schools. So schools around Colchester will be creating unique pinatas to celebrate Taco Week. They will be displayed in the Truro Mall, where you can vote for your favorite. Okay, so remember in Halloween they did something similar. The pumpkins. Was, yeah, I don't they know had pu- school. Was no, it wasn't schools? schools. It was no. the the stores. All did yeah. different pumpkins. Yeah, so be very similar. Um, the winning class will, re- will receive a pizza party from Truro Greco. So that's pretty awesome. So that's taking a bunch of local businesses, right? yeah, and then incorporating that with schools. I think anytime you can get children involved and stuff like that, it's fantastic. It's really good. And Nicole right? Lacadian had the title last year, so they won. Yeah. So they had the pizza party. Now, my question is, do they get to hit the? Are they, are they going to fill the pinatas with candy, and do they get to hit them afterwards? No, that's where they get their pizza. They stuff it with pizza and their pizza party. Oh, that to. Would, could you imagine? <laughs> okay, next event. We went to this last year, so we can speak yeah. to this. Um, it was we, great. It was we can't great. go this year, though, and that's yeah. because we have another event to go to, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So this one's Let's Talk About Entrepreneurship. So they're going to have a panel of different entrepreneurs, and it's going to be at the f- Farmer's Market, and it's a free so event. Last year, right? yes. Yeah, so it's on May the 4th from 5 to 6.30, so it's an hour and a half, so it's right after work. That's great. And there's a social networking event beforehand, and then the panelists introduce themselves and talk about their areas of expertise. So it's free. You can register online on Trailbuzz's uh, blog. And the topics are going to include wage subsidies, grant applications, networking for new hires, general um, talk about shifts, and immigration employment, and Aboriginal employment programs. So the panelists are Angela McCabe from CHRM and Tyler... Pearson from Employer, Lee John from FutureWorks, Christine Moore from Employment Nova Scotia, Clayton Dowry, he is from Aboriginal People's Training and Employment Center, and Matthew Berrigan, and he's actually in the Truro Rotary Club with me, and his name, and he's a regional program manager. Yeah, yeah. So the thing that's really, I love about stuff like that, it's like, it's the whole mindset of your network is your net worth, right? So yeah. surround people around you that you want to do better with. So... Being able to go do things with people in the same mindset of entrepreneurship. And this real estate kind of is entrepreneurial. I mean, we're running our own business. You guys here, are an right? entrepreneur. We're exactly. all entrepreneurs, right? So, so like the, this business is, is entrepreneurship, but you get to go talk with other people yeah. in any, any kind of business at all. Make relationships. It's just yeah. fantastic, right? Connections are ultimately i mean this business is huge but any business where you're an entrepreneur connections are yeah. number one well and in the end with entrepreneurship let's just we'll yeah. pause on this for a second like if you're a realtor you are an independent contractor and you are running your own business which is great because you get your own yep. schedule um and you're only going to hustle and you're only going to make you're only going to make money or sell houses if you hustle right, right like exactly. like it's all about what do you want to do so if you want to make it in real estate i mean there's different personalities and all that sort of stuff but if you want to make it um, you're really going to get out of it what you put in, right? That's what you exactly. always say. You're like, you, and 
especially in this business, but no one's going to put food on your table for you. So no. you can't rely on other people to feed you, feed you or, or make you grow. You need to go do that for yourself. You've got to show up. I think is the best thing. Well, and you need to be out of the box, right? Like, you got, you it's, you started and you did all kinds of interesting right. things when you yeah. first started and um, you've been in the business now just over just the second year you're going yeah. into your second year right. and like you've done so much business and like you've come up with all these creative ideas and I've been in the business I've been in the I've been a realtor for five years but I've been in the industry for eighteen years so and I've seen all kinds of different things but you started and you did all kinds of new things that I've never right. even seen done before which was fantastic yeah. right and they they stick out right the biggest thing is. Find a need and fulfill it. Yeah. Right? So uh, that's kind of real estate and kind of not. But with real estate, with, with what Joanne's saying, something that no one does is creative. I do it. Client retention is huge, right? I love treating my past clients. I yeah. love, like, well, you'll find out if you're one of them. Yeah, and maybe absolutely. you are. But I love being able to keep relationships. Yeah. And be able to bond that and mold that, right? Well, there's nothing but, better than getting, having a client call you up and say, like, and this is where most of, um, I work with Sharon. All of our business is essentially is repeat business. It's, yeah. We have some new business, but most of it is someone's, Sharon's been in the business 40 years now. So like some of it's not like, so before it was like, oh, my kids. Now we're selling houses to the grandkids. Right. Kids. <laughs> right? So like there's nothing better than, um, I've got one client and she would know who she is. I've moved her a couple times now and like she's had me sell houses for her nieces or buy a house, yeah. help her sister buy a house, help like, like, you know, like I've got clients where I've done eight transactions from one transaction because they trusted me they, and right. they still do it. I'm, they become friends and it's, and that's, it's huge. It's, it's huge. huge right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. So what would you say? What would your advice be to a new new agent starting in this business today? Like what um, would you be? You, you, one thing, the number one thing they should do. Um, I can't say number. So like, okay. So the biggest thing, you, you can't let off the gas pedal, right? Like you have to go. Like Joanne said, we're individual we, we can create our own schedule, but yeah, like we don't tell we you, can't, right? we don't if, tell you when to show up. Like right. You have to be here, and you have to sit at a desk from nine to five, and this is what you're to do. You right. guys are we make suggestions, yeah. but you guys are free to run your business within a certain parameters, right? And of right. course, following code of ethics and all that sort of yeah. stuff. But you're really free to run your business however you want. So the biggest thing is never never let your gas off the pedal. I love using this snowball analogy, right? Like you're gonna start your snowball's really small. And you're pushing it and pushing it and slowly it's growing, right? Yeah. And eventually your snowball's gonna be big enough where it's gonna keep its own momentum. So you're pushing it and you're let's say well, today it's, it's April and I got paid for stuff in April, I did in March. Yeah. And I'm doing stuff today, or rather this month I'm gonna get paid in May. In I June. did a closing in July so, already. Right. Right. So like so, don't you need to keep that gas pedal just hundred yeah. percent. And like I said, like you can make your own hours, but I'm not saying you have to. It's a full time job. Put put your heart and soul into it, and make sure you love it. Make sure if you don't love it, then you right. Because like my like my old job, I was great at it, but I didn't love it. This it doesn't feel like work. I could work yeah. every day of the week for an entire year. Well, like what other entire... job would you show up? Like this is this isn't a job, but like this podcast is part of our marketing, of course, and yeah. sharing information. But like. We're recording this on a Sunday night, and it's 8, 12 p.m. Yeah. I'm usually in bed by now, but I was so excited to come do this. Right. Our schedules, right? So, like, just an example. Like, you really need to love it, and you need to think of, like, think of creative ways to do your marketing, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I, I was listening. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and Jared James is one of the ones I listen to, so I can't take credit for this idea, but he was interviewing a broker. Well, she actually, she works for him, but she used to – she, she was a team leader and then she owned the brokerage and now she works with Jared. But she said the biggest advice she had for agents right now is that you need to be visible. Yeah. So by visible, it means, does it just mean posting stuff on social media? You need to be on video. Like, I mean, that's number one, I think, that we're hearing from everybody. You need to be on video creating content. You also need to show up at events. You need to volunteer within the community, which I know you do a lot of that. And I'm, I do a lot of that as well. And you need to go to networking events and you need to be places where people right. can see you. You That's need to right. meet people. Yeah. And um, I don't think you can rely on, like, there is no relying on anybody else in this business, right? You've got to show up and hustle and do like your I work. Said, no one's going to, the reality is no one's going to give you business that if, if they could have it, why would they give it to you? Right. It doesn't make any now, sense. Now, right? referrals are given. That's that, that's a different topic. Yeah. But I mean, if someone could get a 
whatever it is and have it for them why would they why why are they going to put food on your plate they're not going to the only person that's going to hustle for yourself and make money or make relationships or do anything for yourself as you and that's really important i think i think it's really and, important having that mindset because if you have yeah. any other mindset this job's going to be really tough for you you're oh, always going to have oh, poor me like you can't be entitled right no no and at the end of the day like i said now with that analogy you're going to take a vacation and guess what? That gas pedal comes off and that snowball is going to stop rolling. But it's it's nature of this business. Well, so, you have to take a vacation because if you don't, you're going to burn out, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know if I believe in that word, but I... You still have lots of energy. Yeah, you still have um, lots of energy. I'm, I, I do, <laughs> you know, I know it's really important to know yourself and know when you yeah. get to capacity and say, okay, I need some help. And, and that does happen within, like, we've got a really great brokerage. We've got a lot of agents that are really busy. So... For new agents coming in, sometimes that's nice. If if there's overflow of work, that yep. can be referred, right? Exactly. So I think my main thing is just don't stop. And when Joanne was saying, you know, top of mind or being present, being present's good, but that doesn't mean go spend. I mean, Troy don't have any, but I know the majority of the our licensees in Nova Scotia are, are in the HRM. Don't go blow. I've had a couple people tell me quotes they've spent unfathomable amounts for billboards that I promise you you are not going to get business from because if you are just some random face on a billboard or the back of a bus right now, Actually, and it's funny now, I heard you say, you say that now yeah like don't, like, get, don't get me wrong top of mind top of mind is good, really good right? but not starting out like if you've no. got the budget for that that's great but and I heard an agent I would just want to hear you I don't know if it was Jared James or no it was I think it was broke agent media yeah. and they said um they said, it was kind of funny, but I, I don't know how I feel about it. They said, why would you put an ad on the back of a bus? Because if someone can't afford to buy a car, they're probably not your target market. That's thought, right. Exactly. That's, I, that's, oh my God. Yeah. Like that's, now, I didn't even think about but, that. But, but, but you've got to think about that from a bigger perspective. It's kind of a little elitist to say that because if you live in a big city like Toronto, yeah. maybe taking the bus or the subway makes sense because it's easier to get to work, right? Right. Exactly. So, but I just thought, you know. They're very expensive. To go on the back of the bus is very expensive. And yes, you're in the car and you see them, but it's also very passive. It's a passive advertising. Oh, it's so fast. And what I was getting with that is that, so for example, I I have a sign in the mall. It's giant. If you ever go to the Turtle Mall, it's you're like going to see it. It's bigger than it's, life size. It's it, great though. I designed it. So <laughs> I can say it looks great. So I put that up there. I, from day one, I never, ever, ever expect to get business from it. If I get business from it, great. Then that's going to cover that. But what that does, this top of mind, like I can't tell you how many people that I went to school with or people I know or even clients send me a picture. Hey, cool. I had two people yesterday. My fiance sent me one and, and someone messaged me like, hey, cool, cool picture. So it's being top of mind. Yeah. And if you if you spend money for advertising, obviously you, you want to try to get a return on your investment, yep. get business from it, right? But if your sole goal is to try to get business and jam that down people's throats, you're gonna be really upset when you spend $60 on Facebook ads and get nothing from it, because you're playing a long game, right? So you could do one month for $60 and get nothing. Yeah. You could do a year for $720, 60 bucks a month, and in month 10, you can get three deals from it. Yeah. So if you stuck doing that, 60 bucks a month, you would have never seen anything until month 10. Yeah. If you could had a crystal ball, you would have realized, hey, this would have worked out, but it costs money, right? So the big, yeah, like don't, don't, don't drain your and there's, pocket. And there's things you can do that don't cost a ton of money, right? Like no. there's all kinds of things. We won't get into those today, um, but yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do. Go door knock. I mean, like I know we're in 2023. I door knock and I do stuff that's, that, that's, that's more personal and I get success from it. Yeah, you've done. I, you've done I, great I get, success from it. Like right, like it's uh, somewhere I read like less than one percent of transactions. This wasn't Nova Scotia. This was a more broad. Come from social media ads. Yeah. And like this isn't meant to be negative, but I don't think everyone seeing your ad on Facebook is gonna go rush to call you to buy or sell the house. And if they do, fantastic. Yeah. I'm really happy that works out. Well, let's great, let's talk but, about we've kind of deviated from. The yeah. taco thing, but we'll, we'll get back to that. Let's talk about, speaking of interesting things and marketing ideas, you have something coming up Wednesday night. Yeah. Let's talk about that. 
your whole first time home buyer stuff. Oh, sorry, completely blank. I can't. Time's flying, so. Yeah, you're you're we, you're here we, already. Yeah, right. We talked about this last week. So, okay, the, the biggest thing that I love about this first time home buyer seminar is it just there's so many. I don't want to say rumors, but just misinformed pieces of information here and there. Like you need twenty percent for a down payment to buy a house, right? Or it costs you money to work with a buyer's agent. Right. It never costs you money unless you have a private sale that you want to do. Right. And the seller doesn't want to pay commission and you want representation. That right. would be the only time it'll and cost you. That that so so, so seldom so happens. seldom happens. Um, but it's it's, it's possible. But, but so, and, and that you can have an agent. Like right, this is pretty exactly. new in Nova Scotia. Like it's only been in for like the last five years. So mm-hmm. yeah. So the, the biggest thing, and once again, going back to the realtor side of it, I don't do that for business. I do that. I absolutely love it. For education. Love it. I do it for education. I do it to talk to people, get in front of people's faces. But I also do it because I, I just, I love it. It gives me something else to do. Yeah. Right? And I'm coming this week because I want to see yeah. it. Because we might have some other things coming up in the future. And I just want to sit so. in. I think I might be able to learn something from I you. think so. Yeah. So... The, the, the so if you want to come this week, you just get to meet me. That would yeah, be exciting exactly. for you, meet right? Both, both of us. Yes. Right? yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's both okay. of us. Um, That's just my sarcastic humor. Um, but anyways. So, kind of going back to the entrepreneurship thing, this is a, a, a just general, but like surround yourself with people who you want to be or be like. Right? That's great. So like, and people that are positive. If you're around right. negativity all the time, it's terrible for your mental health and. Yeah. It's, oh. And listen, nothing wrong with going out and having a couple of drinks, right? But if your network is people who go out drinking every single weekend, you're probably not going to grow as much or at all if your network was with people who are benefiting themselves, like being healthy, going yeah. to the gym, especially entrepreneurship, people who are building businesses. Networking, right? going to a network. Like we're going to, so this week we've got, we're going to the mayor's breakfast. That's tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow morning yeah. at eight, we're going to have breakfast. Yeah, yeah, so that'll be fun. And then I have the women's, uh, I think it's your 40th motivational luncheon and that's in support of the third place transition yep. house yep. i used to sit on the board and help plan that event it is a fantastic event mm-hmm. and then we're going to the big brothers big sisters um yeah that's, spring gala and that's that, that's really exciting that's, that's next week yeah next, next week so uh, the fourth so you're going to be one of the speakers yeah so, so i'm really so excited to see that there's yeah. there's gonna be three keynote speakers there so this is the first gala that big brothers big so okay hold on backtrack i am a big brother for big brothers big sisters i've been doing it for almost gosh i think over half a year now time flies yeah. i love it i just love it my little brother he's a he's a fantastic dude him and i once a week sometimes twice a week we hang out you do hockey it. you go hockey, play cafe you went took him, you take him to do all kinds of different oh, things oh yeah he's cool kid i love him he's yeah. great so i volunteer um i also donate the money every single so every transaction i do i give a certain portion i donate to big brothers big sisters as well um so i, I support them through that yeah. as well that organization, not just in the Colchester area, but I think it's really crucial for a lot of children's development because yeah. it's not just meant for kids who maybe need someone else in their life, but it's it, it you could have a kid who just wants a cool friend, yeah, right, an older guy or girl who they can hang out with, and that's all it is. And the fact that there's an opportunity that someone like myself. Or yeah. anyone, but I have the opportunity to go and fulfill that. It, it just it makes me so happy. So the the fourth of May, yeah, they're, yeah. so their their first spring gala. So it's really and it's exciting. That warmed by design. Yeah, up and up, right near Nissan and, and Upper Onslow. And they're feeding us. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they still have tickets, I think. Um, so sixty tickets. So super exclusive. So only cool people are going to be there. Yeah. And um, three ski, three keynote speakers. I'm one. I won't say the other two, but they're people you're going to know. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's their first one. So that's May the 4th. 4th, yeah. So I, th- I think that's next, I think that's a Wednesday. Because I think, s- no, sorry, maybe it's Friday. I'd have to, I have to look. My, my schedule is all messed up. But it's the 4th, yeah. Well, the 7th is the Sunday. And I know that because that's my wedding anniversary. There so the 6th would be Saturday. Well, it's Thursday. Thursday then. night, yeah. So that'll be yeah. good. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. So that's really exciting. And once again, kind of backtracking. You for my not doing it for that reason, but I'm able to go connect with people. Yeah, right? I'm able to talk with people. I'm able to go build relationships. So again, it goes back to being visible. 
Like exactly. I thought what that, that, what that agent said really stuck with me and I think it's really important for new agents or yeah. senior agents or whoever who's doing business. It doesn't have to be real estate. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to be visible in the community because Turo is, even though it's a growing town, it's still a small town and it's all about who you know and referrals, right? right. That's the main bread and butter of our, right. our business and for sure. entrepreneurship, like I said, it's all about finding a need and fulfilling it. If you can do that and do it successfully, yeah. you're going to be successful. Now, you're going to put your blood, sweat and tears in it but if there's a need somewhere, like I have one, I don't know how to fulfill on it, but if I ever could, it would be great. I'm not gonna say anything, spoil it. But anyway, the point is, is entrepreneurship is one of the hardest jobs you can have yeah. because you're building something for yourself. You usually don't get paid much no. when you're first starting. And yeah. So let's get we back to our, yeah, let's go back to our, uh, so the next event, so there's a couple other events. Maybe what we'll do is suggest that you go to Trail Buzz yep. and look at them, but we'll just list them off, like just the, just the highlights. So there's a spicy jazz night dance for adults. Yes. I would say I would take my husband to that, David, but we did ballroom dancing classes and he quit halfway through. He said it made him feel sick to go. So we, did, we didn't do it. So that's not happening. Um, and that's on May the 2nd. The next one is let's talk about art, and it's art that you can do with your your fam whole family can yep. do it, and you're making a, a taco art, I think, out of not out of taco supplies, yes. but out of yeah. yeah, and that's on April the thirtieth. Um, sorry, no, they don't have a date on that. May the sixth. Sorry, no, there's no date on it. There's it's... no date on it. Oh, oh, you can pick this. Sorry, you can pick the supplies up at the library, I think, and then there's. The spectacular cocktail night. So it's at Raging Crow. I went to this. I went to this event last year. Yeah. I don't think you came with me to this one. No, but we're gonna go I'm this, busy, year. But I'm going this year. Yeah, you're gonna be my plus one for that. And you can make three sample three themed cocktails. They teach you how to make them. And uh, Raging Crow is great. We've done networking events there. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's the events. This is really great. Like it's a really good community. Like yeah. it's not just food. Now let's talk about the actual tacos. So I do know. They're like, they're kind of giving sneak peeks, but our business of the week, shout out to Parashat. It's one of my favorite places to oh, eat. I love Parashat. Love, and and love, I'm love. saying this because they're not even licensed and we go there all the time. Yeah. Like, like we had your birthday party there yeah. this year. Oh, and they're, the food, the portions are huge. Like absolutely love Parashat, but I saw on their Facebook that they have some bomb tacos. So we're going to, you're going to take me up for supper yeah. and we're going to go there and try so, it. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, we need a hamburger week because if, if a hamburger week comes and I want to be doing something for that myself. Yeah. But <laughs> so let's talk I, I, about I the restaurants. So we're not going to say what all the tacos are. You can go on Trail Buzz and see it. But there's Taco Bros, uh, Franco Gino's. Yep. Habanero. Ha How you say that? Habanero's. That's up at the Cheese Curds place. Barnyard Grill. You just said Parashat. Belly Up. Yep. Nook and Cranny. Both Tro and Tatamagush. The Big Stop. Yeah, there's a lot of wow bistro on Prince, Prince, the Chowder House over in Tatamadush. That's good. Have you ever eaten there? Gracious. No, no. Uh, the Whistler Pub and Grub. Where's that at? Whistler, Stuyak maybe. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's in Stuyak. Mass Town Cafe. This is great. Oh my goodness! There's another one. The Engineering engine room. room. So lots of places to check out, and that's going on from April 30th to May the 6th. So I would definitely uh, start eating if I was you. So I won't say yet, but we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards in a couple of weeks. We'll have to see what your favorite was. Um, so a lot of stuff going on in Toronto there. Um, let's just quickly talk about the home show. Oh, yeah. So the home yeah. show was great. Um, I think the attendance was a little better than last year. Last year it was pretty low. It was about yeah. 2,500. So we made a bet last week. We can't tell you who won because they haven't given me the numbers yet. It's not going to be until they're doing yeah. another home show. So it'll be another week or so or maybe two. Yeah. Um, I uh, thought that there was pretty good flow through there. Yep. We had lots of ballots in our draw. Um, yeah, I think I think there was a great a great amount of exhibitors. What did you think? I think it was really good. This year, the, the biggest issue with the home show last year is there was so much, I'm not gonna say, but there, were, there wasn't a lot of uh, there was a lot variety. of variety. There was a lot of tractors. I wasn't gonna say, but yeah. There, <laughs> there was a lot of tractors. Heat pumps, we'll, we'll say them. Heat pumps and tractors, right? Heat pumps, same this year, a lot less tractors. I love the home show because it gives, we'll say, local businesses an opportunity to shine, right? Yeah. Does, if you're a heat pump company or you're local, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not throwing shade at you. And, but, and Remax has been there for 25 years now, I think. Yeah. And we're the only real estate brokerage there. Like, yeah. I mean, there has been different people through the years, but we're the only real estate brokerage that's there. Right. And I think as an agent, 
it's a huge benefit to be able to, uh, to be at that home show. And um, I know a few people this year, and I was definitely last year, like they, they got new business. Now, for me, it's about meeting, seeing old family and friends. Again, relationships, ships, right? right? Yeah. Building those relationships. I don't know how many tickets we gave away and yeah. all that sort of stuff, but it was, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. That part I, of it. I mean, I just love the fact, like, I'm able to walk around, go to all these different vendors I know from these companies. Well, and learn new things. Yeah, right? Like, I, there was a... Let me think. What a oh, I love there was a, a patio, a screened in patio. Yeah. Place. Loved that. Um, I don't have one. I will in the future, hopefully. There was a dock, a boat dock place. I thought that was great because, like, I obviously don't have a boat, but I don't know where you even start to look for one locally. So that was good. So it's stuff like that, right? Yep, that's so great. We'll touch on the home show again, um, a little more in detail when we get some numbers. But we just wanted to talk on that. It was a su- success. Um, there's so much work going up to it. And then by the time it's gone, it's it's done, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, the Nova Scotia Real Estate um, election for the Re- Nova Scotia Real Estate Commission election. So they held their AGM on Friday morning, and I was really delighted and um, grateful for everyone who voted for me. I think they had 601 uh, votes. 11, which 611. 611, yeah. okay. And that was pretty high, they said. That's what they told me at because we had a little board meeting afterwards. Um, that was a pretty high count, which is kind of sad because we have 2,100 members, but still it was good to see that a lot of people yep. voted. Yep. And I was really honored to be voted into this for a three-year term on the board of directors for the Nova Scotia Real Estate Commission. And yeah, no, that was really exciting. So I really appreciate everyone for the support and to have influence on the regulatory decisions in our province and in our industry is really exciting and to be able to get back to the industry too i'm really excited for it we had a short little meeting everybody welcomed me they were really lovely um most of the meetings are done on zoom but we're going to have a first person uh like in-person meeting not first person a first in-person meeting in june so i'm looking forward to that huge congratulations again thank you dylan That's thank you awesome. thank That's you awesome. i love that we have a representative in the northern region yeah i'm right. really going to try to make everybody proud yeah. and yeah no, it's it's really exciting. I've never I've sat on lots of boards before, but this is a yeah. little higher level, right? Like it's it's um, really exciting. No pressure. No pressure. At all. I know you'll you'll do you'll kill it without yeah. a doubt. So we'll talk about that more as things go on and yeah things. I know Joanne will be fantastic. Oh, thank you. So let's talk about our best offer and low ball of the week. So why don't you go first? So my um, best offer of the week was that I was elected to the board of. Board of directors. That was really great. The other little thing was, I think I already mentioned it. I got out in the garden today. I love. Yeah. yeah. I, this is gonna sound kind of little, not um, little silly, but I really like grounding. Like so, I, I garden in my not. I didn't do it today, but normally I garden in my bare feet because mm-hmm. then you get. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of grounding before. Yeah. Um, but you know, you get connected with the earth, and you just get to go and get your hands yeah, dirty. Like, yeah. I get my hands dirty and get to dig and I'll do all that stuff. So I'm really excited for that to start happening. And my raspberry patch is going to do really good this year. Like I did phenomenal nice. last year, but I'm really excited about that. How about you? Uh, definitely. I'd have to say, Oh gosh, let me think. Um, best offer of the week for me. I clean my car. <gasps> yeah, that's so nice when you do that, isn't it? <laughs> and I've only had it for three months and it's crazy. So definitely took a while. Um, next time I'm just going to go to a detailer, but I clean my car. That, that, it's that, satisfying. That's it's satisfying. Oh, clean my car and I organize my desk at my office. Yeah. Two big wins for me. Getting organized feels really good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I had someone come into my house this week and help me get organized in the house because my life has been in chaos lately because we've just been so busy. And yeah. that was really like, it felt like a master reset. And yeah, I'm exactly. really excited about that. Um, low ball of the week. Just trying to think didn't really have anything really bad happen so that was good um i don't know for me it will probably it's so hard to think of something negative unless it really happens right yeah it's like i don't think anything negative happened this week biggest uh, well hmm. sasha my dog my eldest dog sasha decided that one night it would be fun to wake us up every couple hours because she wanted a treat Oh, no. And then she wanted a drink. And then she got the youngest dog up, and he wanted to play ball in the middle of the night, and he was barking. So I would say lack of sleep that night was probably my hardest <laughs> hardest thing this week. Um, for me, I'm probably going to say... I had a pretty good week this week. I didn't have... My little ball was the week of the week is 
I, I wasn't as busy as I would like to be. I, I yeah, just, you're, I just, you're, I just you're good. You're good week. when you're running hard. Yeah. I just slow work, which isn't bad because I've been go, 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 go. Well, and you got, you, and look at the stuff yeah. you got done. You got your desk organized, you got your car clean. Like sometimes yeah. you wouldn't have time to do that if you were running exactly. mad, right? Exactly. So like you got to take it. I know, and I'm the same way. When I get slowed down, I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah, I have time, I have time to eat lunch today. What's going on? But then when I'm really busy, I'm like, oh, I wish you just had time to eat lunch. So yeah. it's like one of those things, the grass is always green on the other side, exactly. right? So yeah. Exactly. Anyways, I think. That's about it. That's about it. My computer's about to die, so we're going to have to stop <laughs> recording anyways. So um, that was a good podcast this week. Uh, thank you, everyone, for yeah. listening to us. Thanks and, for tuning in. Yeah. And once again, like, like subscribe, subscribe, share, share and give us a review. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and um, Spotify. Spotify. And let us know. What do you want to hear about? We're yeah. open. And we're just lining up our guests, so um, we'll have that news here shortly too, right? It's going to be pretty wicked. Yeah, we're really excited. So we will talk to you soon, guys. Thank you.